What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown for UFC Vegas 35. We have Giga Chikadze going against Edson Barbosa. I'm really looking forward to this card, not only from a, a betting standpoint, but from like a fan standpoint as well. I think we're going to get some great fights. I think we're going to get some violence, and I'm looking forward to all of these fights. I think it's a great card. Um, I'm going to be going through the bets that I have, and as always, going to be talking about the fights from a betting perspective and a betting perspective only. If you do want a further, more in-depth breakdown on why I like which fighter, uh, check out my full card breakdown and prediction video that I posted on Tuesday, and I also did a post-weigh-in show on Friday as well. And I am implementing a new show into my routine on Saturday, one hour prior to the prelim start. It's going to be called Best Bet, where I have a panel full of really sharp guys. And we go around the horn simply giving our, our best bet for each and every fight. I think it's going to be a really fun show. Cannot wait to start that. Have an absolute killer panel that I think you guys will like. So check that out. Going to be today, one hour prior to the prelims. And going forward each and every Saturday, one hour prior to those prelims. So 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time today. So check that out. Uh, I think you guys are going to love it. I'm going to love it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and yeah, before we get started, if you guys can leave a like, also subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Uh, getting really close to 12k subs. I think we're less than five away. So hopefully hit that today. That'd be awesome. Um, the support is always much, much appreciated week in and week out. You guys are the best. So I say we get into it and we will start with the first fight of the night. And I have my first action of the night here. Uh, Mono Martinez going against Guido Canetti. The two bets that I do have is um, the fight doesn't go to decision. Two units on that. I got it at minus 180. And then also Mono Martinez wins inside the distance, minus 120, 0.75 units on it. And yeah, the, the fight doesn't go to decision line has been smashed all week. It seems like it's one of the, if not the most popular to play of the week. And, and for a really good reason, you take a look at Mono Martinez. And he's, uh, he's a finisher, has a ton of power, 100% finish rate. And he's never won over that one-and-a-half round mark. All of his wins come on that under. Uh, majority of his wins coming in the first round, a couple in the second, early second. And Guido Canetti, 41-year-old Bantamweight, 50% striking defense, no chin. Um, been finished in all of his losses, all five of his losses. I think there's a very good chance that Mono Martinez not only wins this fight, but uh, probably does win it inside the distance and very early as well. I like Mono here a lot. Going to be the bigger fighter, the much younger fighter, very powerful guy, and... You know, he did miss weight, which, you know, I, I like that for him. Four-pound advantage here in a fight where I thought if Guido Canetti is going to win, it's going to be based off of him getting takedowns for 15 minutes. I Even even now, I don't see that even more. So I like Mono Martinez here. I like him by knockout, probably in the first round. But for me, I think the fight doesn't go to decision is my favorite play on this uh, fight here. And then also Mono Martinez inside the distance as well. So 2.75 units total invested on this first fight of the night. Big part of my night here. Hopefully Mono does start it off strong. Getting into the next fight, we have Jamal Emmers going against Pat Sabatini, one of my favorite fights on the card. Two guys that I'm very, very high on. I think these guys have a ton of upside. Um, and it's a tough fight to pick. I mean, we see Jamal Emmers, who is minus 145, and I do pick him to win because I do think he has a lot of advantages in this fight. He's going to be the much more experienced fighter. He's fought the much better competition. Uh, I give him the striking advantage, the cardio advantage, the wrestling advantage. I give him pretty much every single advantage outside of the grappling. Um, Pat Sabatini is a legit BJJ black belt, so if it does hit the mat, I think it'll get very interesting, but I kind of think Jamal Emmers is going to fight smart, you know, stuff the takedowns, but again, if this does hit the mat, Sabatini is going to have a lot of opportunities here. Uh, Jamal Emmers is someone that, uh, you know, got reversed by Jika Chikadze, not a good look there, so I think if Jamal Emmers does fight smart, though, he wins the fight, but minus 145, I'm going to pass there, um, just a, a fight I want to sit back and watch, a fight with two guys that I'm really high on. But as far as a straight pick, I'll go Jamal Emmers. Um, I think fight goes to uh, decision is something to look at. I think it's like minus 200, very chalky, but really hard to see either fighter getting finished here. If anything, if anybody gets finished, I think it's going to be Pat Sabatini getting a submission here. But outside of like a Pat Sabatini sub, I think this does go the distance. So if I was to play anything on this fight, it probably would be that fight goes. But no action here for me. going to sit back and watch him. All right, next we have J.J. Aldrich going against Vanessa Demopoulos, and I do have a parlay on this fight, and I also have a little half-unit shot on the under two and a half rounds. I'll kind of talk about why. So I got the under two and a half rounds at um, plus 280, half a unit on that, and I also have Aldrich parlayed with uh, the Mearshart and uh, Mahmoud Murd. Uh, fight doesn't go to decision, uh, minus 148, 1.5 units on that. So two units total invested in this fight. And I, I think it's a mismatch. I think it's a very good matchup here for J.J. Aldrich. I think she's going to have a massive size advantage, a massive striking advantage. What does Vanessa Demopoulos do? Well, 
Well, uh, not many things. Not many things. She's a really good grappler, but she doesn't have the wrestling to get it there. So Aldrich is going to be piecing her up for the majority of the fight. Vanessa Demopoulos is very, very hittable. And although J.J. Aldridge is not much of a finisher, only a 20% finish rate, she's going to have many opportunities to hit Demopoulos in the face and hit her in the face quite a bit. Uh, I can see an Aldridge finish here. Um, she has not found a finish yet in the UFC, but you kind of take a look at who she's fought, and, and this is going to be her easiest fight in the UFC by a pretty significant margin. So I can see an Aldridge finish here. And the reason I did take the under... Um, rather than a Aldrich inside the distance, because it kind of covers both sides, right? Like, Aldrich, she has been submitted twice. Demopolis, she's a pretty solid finisher, a uh, really good grappler. So if it does hit the if it, if it does hit the mat, um, you know, Demopolis is going to have an opportunity to maybe get, like, an armbar from guard. I can see that happening. So the under kind of covers both sides here. I took a shot on the, the Nunez uh, Malecki under last fight at, like, I think it was, like, plus 200 and something. Um, this is uh, like plus 280. I, I really, really do like that here um, in terms of like a little small poke. And then Aldrich, straight, I like in a parlay. I think she's a great parlay piece. I think she gets it done. The bigger fighter, more experience, better competition, um, striking advantage, strength advantage, you name it, outside of pure grappling. And Demopolis doesn't really have any way to get it there. So if JJ Aldrich fights smart, I think she's a very good chance of winning. And uh, I can see a finish. So give me the under here and then also Aldrich in a parlay. Very confident. I know it's, it's it's crazy to say, but you know, very confident in JJ Aldridge. All right, Dustin Jacoby going against Darren Stewart. Um, yeah, I like Jacoby here. If you guys saw the weigh-ins, Jacoby's the much bigger fighter. I do like that. Minus one eighty-five, not horrible. Um, no play on here for me, but if I was to play anything, it probably would be that Jacoby money line. Uh, just coming into it, first look, I thought Stewart might have an opportunity to come in here and get takedowns. Uh, Jacoby was taken down nine times. In his last fight, but you kind of take a look at it, and Jacoby has a very good get-up game. He's gonna be the much bigger fighter, the much better striker, ton of more volume. Uh, Darren Stewart very hittable. I think he has like a 49% striking defense, and Darren Stewart doesn't really go for as many takedowns as you'd like to see if you are expecting him to win a, a wrestling-based decision. So, even if he does try to you know shoot a ton of takedowns, which I don't think he will, if he, even if he does try to do so. I just don't see him having success against a much bigger Jacoby, a Jacoby with a very good takedown uh, defense and a very good get-up game. And when it is on the feet, I do favor Jacoby quite a bit. So, yeah, I don't hate the minus 185. Honestly, did not pull the trigger on it myself, but tempted. But I'm going to pass here. I'm going to sit back and watch. I think Jacoby does get it done, though. Uh, Wellington Terman going against Sam Alvey. And I do have two bets here. I have one unit on Sam Alvey, plus 132. And I also took a, uh, a quarter unit shot on Sam Alvey wins by knockout at plus 310. And yeah, I don't get this line. I, I get that Sam Alvey has not won in, in so long. I get that Sam Alvey was submitted in his last fight. You know, maybe those two things are why um, he's the underdog here. But outside of that, like, yeah, you take a look at the advantages for both fighters, and I, I really struggle to find many advantages for willing to determine in this fight outside of the age gap, which is 10 years. That's pretty significant. But outside of that, like, Sam Alvey is going to have the experience edge, the better competition, uh, the better striking, more power, um, better striking defense. Wellington Terman has an awful 43% striking defense. Wellington Terman has a terrible chin, has been knocked out in his last two fights, coming back way too soon after a brutal knockout against Silva in his last fight as well. And, you know, how does Terman win this fight? You know, Terman wins this fight by getting Sam Alvey down to the mat and using his ground game. Terman's a very good grappler, but with the problem is... Sam Alvey's not good at a lot of things, but one thing he's really good at is he has phenomenal takedown defense. 82% takedown defense for Alvey in a phenomenal get-up game. Very hard to hold down, very hard to control. And it's not like Sam Alvey's a fish out of water on the map by any means. He's a legit brown belt, very experienced brown belt. And last fight uh, against Julian Marquez where Alvey got submitted, that was his very first UFC submission loss. Prior to that, he had never been submitted in the UFC. And if you watch the fight, uh, Marquez heard him bad before submitting him. So, yeah, I see this playing out on the feet. And at that point, like, you know, why why is Alvi the dog here? I mean, he's going to have many opportunities to knock out Terman. I think he does knock out Terman. Um, yeah, I played Sam Alvi as an underdog here, plus 132, and also a quarter unit on that knockout prop. I think the knockout prop is a very good look. Uh, I could see Sam Alvey winning a decision, but I, I really see a knockout just with how hittable Terman is. Um, the very questionable chin. And, you know, I know Alvey has not won in a long time, but he's a finisher. 20 knockout wins for Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey almost has as much knockout wins as Wellington Terman has fights. So he has the power to do it. He's, he's only 35 as well. 
kind of seems like he's like 40, 39, but no, Sam Alvey's 35 years old. So winnable fight. If he does not win this fight, Sam Alvey is, is definitely cut, but I think it's a very winnable fight, and I'm uh, honestly confused at the line. So we'll see what happens, but I, I do like Alvey in this spot. Alessio Dushriko going against Abdul Razak Alassane. I do have two bets in this fight as well. I have the fight does not start round three, plus 150, half a unit on it. And I also have D. Shiriko winning in round three, plus 1,200, quarter unit on it. Um, you know, basically, I think this fight has a very good chance of finishing. I like the under two and a half. Wouldn't really touch the under one and a half. I kind of think if Alassan does win, it's going to be in the first round. Alassan a 100% finish rate. Alassan a 100% knockout rate in the first round. So Alassan has not won in, in any other method. Outside of a first round knockout. So if uh, DiCherico can survive that early storm, I think DiCherico does take over the fight goes on. I think he gets to finish himself. DiCherico, a very solid finisher, um, finishing nearly half his wins by knockout, has a lot of submissions on there as well. And, you know, Jacob Alcoon, you know, couldn't finish Alassane, but, you know, uh, DiCherico is a much better fighter, in my opinion, than Jacob Alcoon. And it's just weird. I mean, you see the, the fight doesn't go to the decision at minus 140. Typically, in, in Abdul Razak al Hassan fights, you'll see the fight doesn't go to decision at minus 300, minus 350. So I think we're getting a big discount um, at, in this fight doesn't go to decision because we saw al Hassan go to decision in his last fight against Jacob Malkoon. Um So yeah, I see a finish either way. I think the under, it does cover both sides. I personally went with the, the fight does not start round three at plus money there. I love that spot because I do think if it's early, al Hassan. I think DiCherico can either finish early or, you know, kind of wear on him and get him out of there late as well. That's why I also took a, uh, a shot on the third round prop there, plus 1,200. So, yeah, I'll pick DiCherico to win. If you are on al probably bet him in the first round. Probably bet him my first round knockout. That's literally uh, his path to victory. He has not won any other way. So, I'd be shocked if he won any other way. So, give me DiCherico for the win, but I do love the unders. I love the fight doesn't go to round three. And the fight doesn't get the decision in general there. All right, moving up. And then I have a parlay here. I'll, I'll get through the parlay right now. I have uh, two units on this parlay. Uh, Mahmoud Muradov parlayed with Andre Petrovsky. Minus 181, two units on that. And those lines have been completely obliterated. Um, and it's now like crazy. I think uh, Muradov's like minus 800 on, I saw on a book. And then uh, Petrovsky is like minus 600, minus 650 on a book. So if you got in early, great. Um, but yeah, these lines have been smashed. But yeah, I like uh, Makhman Muradov here. Also, do have the, the fight doesn't go to decision in a parlay with uh, J.J. Aldrich. I do like that parlay a bit. So yeah, two parlay pieces for me involving this fight, involving a Makhman Muradov um, knockout. I think he does knock out Mirchard here. Um, I think the fight isn't good decision is a very good play. There's actually a ton of money coming on on the overs on the fight goes. I don't really understand that the fight doesn't go to decision opened up minus 430 and it's currently minus 215. I kind of I don't necessarily agree with the opener, but I think the opener was closer to where it should be than the minus 215. Like this fight's going to end inside the distance. Uh, Mearshard has been to decision um, very, I think like four times in like 46 fights maybe five times. So Mearshart is a killer be killed fighter. You see it right there, 11 finished losses for Gerald Mearshart, three by knockout. Simple as this. If, if Mearshart gets it down to the mat, he could get a sub. If he cannot get it down to the mat, there's a very good chance he gets knocked out. So I, I'm very high on Mackman Muranoff here, as are a lot of people, but I really do like the fight is going to decision. At, um, and I parlayed it up with JJ Aldrich there. Finishing up the parlay, Andre Petrovsky, uh, minus 600 now. I was able to get him at minus uh, 385, so that line has been smashed since then. And, and for a really good reason, this is a big mismatch, in my opinion. Uh, what is Michael Gilmore bad at? Bad takedown defense, bad grappling defense has been submitted um, a million times. He's been finished. You know, all his losses, all coming by submission. What is Andre Petrovsky really good at? Wrestling and grappling. I mean, he's a, a D1 college wrestler. Um, he's training at the same camp as Sean Brady. Very good grappler. Um, very good finishing ability. 100% finish rate for Petrovsky there. And I did take, along with him as a parlay piece, I did take the under one and a half rounds at minus 125. I have 1.25 units on that because my, think, my thought process behind that is if Petrovsky does win, I do think it is under that one and a half round mark. If it does go over, I actually have some uh, concerns about him in the fight. I mean, we've seen him slow down. I have concerns about the gas tank 
of Petrovsky. But in this fight, I kind of think it doesn't really matter. I really don't see it getting that far. So in the future, I will have some uh, question marks about Petrovsky. But in this fight, I think it's one takedown. I think the fight's over shortly after. So again, I have him parlayed with Muradov, and I also have the under one and a half. I think both are are pretty solid spots there. I know it's going to be a week where you know everybody does a, a ton of parlays and. Um, usually I don't really condone parlays, but this is a week where I think parlays are, are solid. I think there's a lot of great parlay pieces that you can look at. All right, next we have my favorite fight on the card. Kevin Lee going against Dana Rodriguez. is a very tough fight to call because you have Kevin Lee who's fought the much better competition, whereas Dan Rodriguez, I think he's going to have some advantage in this fight in terms of you know being the bigger fighter, in terms of being the better striker, more volume. But, you know, Kevin Lee's fought, you know, the best of the best guys. Just, you know, his last fight was against Charles Oliveira, the champion. Has fought guys like Rafael Dos Anjos, guys like that. Whereas Danny Rodriguez is fighting guys like Gabe Green, you know, guys like that. Uh, Preston Parsons. So, I'm going to pick Danny Rodriguez here. I'm not going to bet it. Um, I think he does win. If I had to bet anything, it probably would be that D-Rod money line. But it, I would not be shocked if Kevin Lee came out here and, just prove that this is a levels fight and he's been fighting the better competition. And this is a big step down in competition for Kevin Lee. A big step up in competition for Daniel Rodriguez going from Preston Parsons to Kevin Lee. Whereas Lee's going from Charles Oliveira to, to D-Rod. So I think D-Rod could po- pose some problems here with the size, with the volume, uh, with the rel- well-roundedness. Um, great takedown defense, great ground game. But, you know, Lee has fought the better competition by a mile in that is very hard to ignore, and that's ultimately why I'm going to be passing in this fight. But I do like D-Rod as far as a pick. Uh, just not going to get there from the money line. All right, next we have our two tough fights. Going to quickly you know, skim through these. I don't have action in either of them. I did uh, have a lot of action on the Petrovsky uh, gilmore tough fight. But this one, Tercio's high stand. I think the line's about accurate. Minus 150 is where I'd put it. Um, you know, Tercio's going to be the more well-rounded fighter, the more experienced fighter, has fought the better competition, um, better striker, and High Stand is going to have success early, I do think. I think High Stand wins the first round more often than not. It's just as the fight goes on, how's he going to look in the second round, in the third round? I do think he slows down as the fight goes on, and Ricky Tercio does not slow down whatsoever. So I feel like it's going to be a close-ish fight, but I do like the well-roundedness of Tercio's great ground game. Both guys are brown belts and BJJ. Ricky Tercio's poor takedown defense, but, but very active off his back. I think Brady's going to be a very popular dog, and I get it. He's going to fight for your money. Um, he knows what his bread and butter is, and that's his ground game. But, you know, Ricky Tercios has a pretty solid ground game himself. But all in all, this fight's going to be great. It's going to be a very high-paced fight. Um, I think, again, I think the line's accurate. Minus 150 for Tercios. Um, really no props I'd look at either. Uh, maybe Tercios in round three. If Brady Highstand does slow down quite a bit, maybe a Tercios round three prop. But outside of that, I'm going to sit back and watch this one. Brian Battle going against Gilbert Urbina. You have Battle, who is uh, minus 175. Urbina is plus 150. Again, I, I'd line it right around the minus 175 range for Brian Battle here. I think he's a lot of advantages in this fight. Um, them being the, the big one is going to be he's more defensively sound. Man, is Gilbert Urbina very hittable. We saw him get knocked down four times against Treshawn Gore. This guy has no striking defense. I think Battle's going to be able to piece him up for three rounds or maybe even find a finish here. Uh, Battle by KO plus 450. I, I don't hate it. You know, seeing how hittable. Urbina is. I could. I wouldn't be shocked if there's a knockout here, but I'll pick Battle. Um, even like the decision plus 180. Um, not terrible as well, but I'm gonna pass here as well. I think Battle does get it done. Uh, Urbina's probably gonna have to wrestle, probably gonna have to grapple, and Battle has shown good takedown defense and good grappling himself. So give me Battle here, minus 175. It's not horrible, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on this one as well. The only tough action I have is gonna be on the Petrovsky fight. And then the main event, do want to remind you guys to please like the video, also subscribe if you have not yet, and also check out the new um, pre-fight show best bet where we give the best bet for every single fight, kind of like this, but with a panel of really sharp guys. Cannot wait for that. Um, one hour prior to the prelim, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time going live there. But we have a main event here, Jika Chikadze going against Edson Barbosa. And, yeah, I like Barbosa quite a bit. Uh, I do have a bet on him. One unit, minus 105. I also have the under four and a half rounds, uh, minus 125, 1.25 units on. I think someone's getting finished either way. I think if Jika Chikadze does win, it's early. I think if Barbosa does win, it is either early or later in the fight. And I've broken it down a million times, talked about it a million times, why I do like Barbosa. I think he's going to have a lot of advantages, experience as being one, level of competition being another. Cardio, I think, is huge as well. It's a five-round fight. We've seen Jiga Chikadze slow down uh, tremendously in three-round fights. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, if this does get to the third round, 
in the fourth round and the fifth round, and, and Giga is slowing down in that third round. You know, you know, what's he gonna look like in that fourth? What's he gonna look like in that fifth? Um, you can't slow down against Barbosa. I mean, you can slow down against Jamal Emmers and, and, and get away with it. You can slow down against Brandon Davis and get away with it. Um, you can slow down against Austin Springer, and he got subbed there. But you can't slow down against Edson Barbosa. I think it's a big step up in competition for uh, Giga Chikadze. If he does beat Edson here, it's going to be the biggest win of his career by a mile. I mean, he beat Cub Swanson, but Cub Swanson is 37 years old at the end of his career. Um, prior to that, be Jamie Sim. I'm just not impressed with Giga Jakazi's record whatsoever and the guys he's fought. I will say I, I see a ton of improvements week or each and every fight of Chikadze, but still big step in competition here. I'll take Edson. I'll take Edson to break Giga Chikadze. Could Giga catch him early? Sure, he could. But I do like Barbosa to take over as the fight goes on and eventually find that finish. Um, Chikadze. By KO plus two. That's how I'd play Giga. I, I'd play him at plus 250 by KO. I, I don't see him winning a decision. I don't see him having success past that second round, to be honest. So, But yeah, I'm taking Barbosa. I'm taking Barbosa to win by third or fourth round KO. So that's about it. We'll quickly go through the action. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting all my bets there. I, I don't think I'll add anything, but whenever I add anything, it is always on there. Um Edson Barbosa, minus 105, one unit. Sam Alvey, plus 132, one unit. Those are my two straight bets. Getting into the two parlays, the first one, Muradov, parlay with Petrovsky. Minus 181, two units on it. Uh, the next parlay, J.J. Aldrich, parlayed with Mearshart, Machman, Muradov. Fight doesn't go to decision. 1.5 units on that. Getting into the props here, uh, Martinez, Canetti, fight doesn't go to decision. Two units on that. Also, Mono Martinez winning inside the distance, minus 120. 0.75 units on that. Uh, Edson Barbosa, Giga Chikadze, under 4.5 rounds, minus 125, 1.25 units. Petrovsky, Gilmore, under 1.5 rounds, minus 125, 1.25 units. Abdul Razak, Alassane, DiCherico, fight does not start round 3, plus 150, half a unit. And if it does start round 3, that's fine, because I have DiCherico winning in round 3, plus 1,200, 0.25 units. Sam Alvey wins by KO, quarter unit, plus 310. And then finally, Demopolis versus Aldrich, under two and a half rounds, half a unit sprinkle, plus 280. That is all my action. Hopefully make some money tonight. Good luck with uh, your bets. If you're going the other way, good luck um, as well. And uh, let's make some money. Let's have fun. Let's watch these fights. I think it's going to be a great card. And that's about it, guys. Check out the new show one hour prior to the prelims. Like the video. It's much appreciated. And also subscribe as well. Um, again, he hit me up on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. My bets will be posted there shortly. So that's about it, guys, and good luck for UFC Vegas 35.